In this video, Mochi joins me to play backgammon in the backgammon with Grandmasters series. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoy this video. Please like and subscribe and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Please let me know what you think in the comments below what you'd like to see in future videos so I can work on that. I appreciate your super thanks. These small donations help me continue to create the high quality content that you enjoy. And now I have membership options available where you get exclusive access to the top and most popular videos such as this one. My book, Back M and Back Game Strategies, is available. There's a link in the description to where you can get it. And if you're interested in lessons, please contact me via email. Again, in this video, it's my great honor, pleasure, and privilege to have world number one player, two-time world champion, distinguished author, UBC champion, Mochi Masayuki Mochizuki. Welcome. Hello, hello. Thank you, Alex, for asking me to be here. It's my, you know, pleasure to be. And uh, yeah, let's let's do it. I'm very happy to have you. You you have all these top accolades, and uh, it's really an honor to uh, call you a friend. So thank you for joining me. Thank you, thank you. So there are a few things before we start. We wanted to talk about. So this is the backgammon with Grandmaster series, but I had to make an edit here to make a super Grandmaster for you. And I know we had discussed uh, last year you won back your UBC title. So I wanted to just go through this. Um, this is what happened last year, right? I know you had to, you wanted to talk about it, right? How was it? Um, well, I'm pretty glad that I made my comeback. Um, I'm not sure if viewers watch the game, but it was great series. So if you don't, uh, please do so. Um, there is a three days uh, backgammon, and day one was disaster. <laughs> I was losing, losing, losing. This then one is day one, one right? Three. Yeah, I made some uh, great comeback, and uh, yeah, managed to win against Sander, who is my yeah. good friend for a long time. Yes, yeah, so some of the viewers are not familiar with the UBC format. Uh, can you please explain it? Okay, so it's series of seven-point matches. Uh, you have to play 12 seven-point match, and each match has two outcomes, one for the uh, traditional win rules, and the other one is uh, PL win rules. That match will be analyzed by Extreme Gammon, and whoever has the lowest PL win a point as well. So one point for PR, one point for you know traditional you know win rules, right? Uh, so for example, match number one, uh, Sandra won seven five, um, and Sandra also won PR because he had a lower error rate. He had two point four one, and I had two point nine nine. So he won two points, uh, and whoever gets uh, thirteen points uh, because we have twenty four results, right? So the the tie score will be twelve twelve. So if you reach 13, then you win the series. Um, in case of 12-12, the uh, average PR will be a tiebreaker. Yeah, so that's great. And this was this was a picture of you when you were playing. Uh, <laughs> it was on the beautiful... Like I'm like uh, taking a job interview or something. <laughs> <laughs> that, that board is really beautiful. How was it to play on? Oh, yeah, it's a cozy uh, a cafe in Denmark and Copenhagen. It's uh, pretty, you know, it's a bunch of old games. And yeah. People very friendly. You know, it's like second home Denmark is. Yes, and that's the, the that's the Casio board, the Backgammon Galaxy, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, yeah, it's yeah. beautiful. It's beautiful. And that's a picture of you. Uh, people were laughing about this because you were very serious and Sander was getting another beer. Ah, no, <laughs> it's not okay. Whatever, that doesn't matter. But yeah. Sandra was serious until some point, but then he started to drink. No, know? but he can focus. He can focus even when he's drinking. So I think he focuses more. Even yeah, <laughs> some people are like that. <laughs> uh, this is when you won. Yeah. Um, so that's that. There was another thing that was a news today. This this will not uh, be shown until later. But today there was the news that now. You're no longer the only super grandmaster in the world. You have company with Dirk Schiemann. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm quite happy about it. So yesterday was the day of the history, uh, I think. This uh, the greatest news of this year for sure. Um, I'm not sure how many people really truly realize how difficult, how incredible it is to play 
uh, below 2.5 over 300, 300 experience point. So I had a private, um, you know, phone call with him yesterday, congratulates him. And we share the experience, obviously. And uh, during the call, you know, we said like, um, um, to achieve 2.5, say you play, you know, four in one match, right? Then right. you have to play 1.5 uh you know um in the next next match that that's like <laughs> super yeah, difficult oh no actually a one if you achieve uh, achieve you need to achieve 2.5 if you play four the next match should be one because you know it's 1.5 uh right yeah yeah uh, and this is like if you play five it's basically over <laughs> you, know, you have to <laughs> scratch <laughs> uh, so there's no room for any like oversight, it's oversight is done, right? It's gone. And any room for like human, like honest mistake, like fatigue or, you know, forgetting right. a couple for a couple of rows or whatever, it's, it's quite difficult. Like if you play 2.8, most people are very like celebrating, right? But if you play 2.8 in this challenge, you have to be like really disappointed. Now you have to play what, like 2.2? to recover the, the loss, you know, that's like <laughs> incredible. <laughs> I'm happy if I play under four. <laughs> but but this is this is a really amazing. And to me, I think like these UBC formats, it's just like really, really important to be a good player. And for me, like a lot of the people have this discussion that it's more important to win in the game uh, for me i think it's more important to do to get a better pr because that's the harder thing the other thing is just luck you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you know i would love a tournament where you know you play whatever you play and then the pr is the only thing that you get points for mm, okay okay well i i kind of like the ubc format that 1.4 traditional win and the 1.4 pr right right it's, it's anyway generally accepted um obviously the uh just win and lose no pr is too random like lots of valiance you have to uh, i mean the champions of one tournament doesn't mean anything basically oh yeah uh, but uh, also just for pr is kind of like too nerd maybe <laughs> <laughs> <You don't like me>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I, I mean uh also, the backgammon is not all about PR, you know, there's a lot of other um, uh, factors uh, into, you know, the game, you know, sometimes your opponent is very weak, you have to change your strategy, you know, right. maybe it's on short time, you know, there's a lot of things. Uh, but PR is definitely one of the most important uh, factors in the game as well. So, yeah, that's my feeling. Yes, in my opinion, you know, that's that's very good for people that study the game, but Ultimately, backgammon is a game, and if it's a game, the most important thing is to have fun, and that's that's what I like the most about it. And one of one of my personal initiatives is to get more people playing the game. And you are not only the best player in the world, but you are an outstanding ambassador because you help do these things. So I'm trying to get specifically underrepresented demographics to play the game. Uh, number one, women. Number two, youth. And I know you've recently done some things to teach children and you posted it on social media. Do you want to talk about that? Uh, yes. Um, I think to grow back in general public, I, it's most important to put invest your, you know, our time and our money onto young generations uh, because uh, they are the futures. They have time. Um, they have a potential. Um, so anyway, so uh, we are visiting not only me, but uh, JBS uh, visiting uh, elementary school in Tokyo. And we had a special class for two hours. Uh, we teach, we taught um, cultural background of Bakemon. Actually, Bakemon was in Japan like a thousand years ago. Right. Um, then also, uh, I, I know we taught uh, statistics, like we had like small experiment, like loading uh, dice 10 times and what's average. And of course, you know, the average will be like 3.5. 
but uh, for kids, it's like kind of interesting, right? And then, of course, we play backgammon. Um, people play, uh, kids are playing backgammon each other, uh, and they also challenge uh, me, Kazuki, and other staff members of JBS. So we, it's quite enjoyable. And this is a third year, um, you know, so this became a tradition of that school, and we wanted to expand this kind of project to other schools as well. That's why I created a, a nice little video about what I'm doing. And I hope, you know, other educational uh, organization will see it and, uh, you know, contact us. Uh, you know what I mean? And I'm also sure that so many other people working on uh, kids' education. So I created the Facebook group uh, where people can post their achievement uh, regarding education, uh, back in as education. Uh, so go check it out. And uh, if you have done or if you're trying to do something, um, you know, uh, let's share the information. Yes, I will put a link to that. And I think it's fantastic what, what you're doing. And I believe that part of the reason why I started this YouTube channel is because I think Backgammon is a visual game and YouTube is a good platform to show the game, just not just by playing, but by doing interviews. And you're doing an outstanding job, of course, going to the schools, but you're only one person. There's only a certain number of hours in the day. I'd love to create videos with you or with others that can be put on and then you just uh, send it to all the schools. So that's maybe something we can consider in the future. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's that's, that's very doable, very doable. Yeah, um, okay, well, very good. Uh, that was fantastic. Let me go ahead and share this so that we can play. Let's see where it is. Here we go. Are you able to see that now? Sure. Okay. Uh, while we're recording, you're able to see our images on the side, but that won't be visible later. We're playing a five-point match. Usually I do a three-point match, but uh, since I have an honorary guest uh, such as yourself, I'm doing a five-point match. It'll be a little bit longer against XG. We're playing on a beautiful Gammon or X-22 Paul McGreal Memorial Board, which I use exclusively for the Backgammon with Grandmasters series. And you'll be playing the red checkers at the bottom, XG, the white checkers at the top. I chose these colors because it's the colors of the Japanese flag. Um, and you're welcome. <laughs> to yes, yes. And um, you're welcome to consult with me. And um, we're going to have viewers of different levels. So I might ask you some basic questions or some more complicated questions. And then, and then we'll do an analysis. All right, and as I said, the most important thing is to have fun and the second is to learn. So, two, one. Okay, come down and slot to the five point. So for a lot of the beginners, they usually split here. What is the advantage of doing this? Ah, uh, if he doesn't hit me, I, I can make a five point, like almost for sure. So that's mm -hmm. like risk and reward. And you also unstack the two heaviest points. That's true. Yeah, and if you get hit, you might have good sixes from the bar. Mm -hmm. Very good. 4-2, so hit. Okay. Okay. 5-2. Uh, bar 20. And 13-11 makes the 11 point. Okay. Okay, 6-3. Okay. Strong. Double six. Oh. oh. Okay. A lot of doubles. Um, six, four, two. six. Coming cool. in, and I think starting seven. Now yeah. he's double me. That is difficult. <laughs> yeah, I, that's what I'm thinking. You would be double, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think it's a take. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let Let me think. Well, first of all, he has a bad six from the bar. All right. Like especially one six two six three six four six. Double six is the worst, obviously. Oof. And if he rolls a seven, he will hit me, but then I can roll on four and make like sort of one four back game kind of thing. Maybe you like back games. I, I mean, I'm, <laughs> I don't want to play four one back game, it's uh, like one of the weakest back game, but still, um, it's like a takeable, you know. Yeah, wow, is it take or pass? Fuck. Three one, Jesus Christ! 
Oh boy, I didn't know you're religious. <laughs> okay, give me a couple more seconds. Ooh, yeah. It's probably a pass. Yeah, that's those are the things that I'm thinking is like. You know, your recent book, you wrote an outstanding chapter, two outstanding chapters. I'm thinking about one of the ones that Mark wrote about doubling like this. And it's like, yeah. look at the various features, like the race. Obviously, you're being killed. Yeah. Uh, the threats. There's a lot of threats. Yeah. And what do you what do you have as an advantage? The 11 point? Uh, well, he's an on the bar. That's one. Thing. Right. On the bar. That's the thing. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I, I make you know, achieve for one back. And what do you think? And by the way, my opinion before I listen to you um, is pass at the five point match and take the money gain. Uh, yes. So, yeah, I, I think uh, maybe for the viewers who are not familiar with match strategy a little bit, mm -hmm. how do you how do you change things based on the, this score in particular? Um, so we are playing five point match. Uh, so losing gammon or winning gammon is uh, more effective than money game because it puts you you know four zero um it is a crawl game so gammon value the value of the winning gammon here is higher like more expensive to lose gammon and i'm likely to lose gammon as well so i fuck i mean i i take because i like to take <laughs> okay so you want to take this yeah, I want to take this. It's okay. fun. It's, it's a fun game. One of the things I like to do when we analyze it is look yeah. at this uh, double take question and change the score. So mm -hmm. if it were a different score, would you take or pass? Like, let's say you were down zero one, five away, four away. Now you have to be careful, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why? Now, now it's a, a super big pass, I think. <laughs> Well, because um, now he's four away, the four away, the gammon value is like sky high. Uh, so getting gammon, uh, you have to avoid getting gammon at all costs. So yeah, th that will be different to your pass. But you know, zero, zero to five, it's probably a small pass or something, but I don't care. I want to, I want to look, you know, let's play it fun. Yeah. And if we were four away, four away. It's also a pass, I think. What if, what if you were white and you were ahead three away, four away? I'm not gonna double then. <laughs> not gonna double, but if it were four away, three away, you would double, and it would yeah, yeah. be much stronger. Okay, so we'll take. Yeah. Two one. Okay, comes in and hits. Now we need something uh -huh. good. Uh huh. Six four. Okay, the four is the easy part. Yeah, interesting. Uh, I think I we can hit. I think we have to hit because. Even if we make the seven point, he has a lots of return shots from the bar. Any six, he would hit me. Oh, sorry, any ace, he would hit the midpoint. I'm talking about starting seven. Could you, could you yeah, change starting like seven? This. Yeah, yeah. It, obviously, the other play. But then he will hit me an ace, um, deuce, and three. And all of them are very expensive anyway. So why don't we, you know, hit the five point? Because this would gain the most if he doesn't hit back you know so i would go with it yeah this is very interesting i think i think you were you were aware that um i was proofreading your book with alec Barr before it was published right mm -hmm. um i'm also proofreading dirk Sheeman's book on hitting which is an outstanding book and he talks about these kinds of things because this is it's not just a tempo play i call it a double tempo play right okay because it does, it does more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Six four. Okay, so that worked out. But you're not redoubling yet, right? Obviously. No, 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 not no. at all. What would be a good role for you? Uh, like cover and cover, like uh, or cover and hit. I mean, cover and cover means and making an anchor and making a five point, or double two, a... double three. E, oh yeah, double A's, double do's, double so small numbers. You know, three one two one three two. Yeah, lots of good numbers. Five is bad. I think I don't. I don't want to see five. And four is probably not a good. Uh, yeah. So. Okay. Let's go. Four one. 
Oof. Wow. Wow. So many numbers. Okay. So, so there are a bunch of choices to eliminate options. Uh, let's just say, what if I play six five as a as a one, and I have two fours, right? Um, so let 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 me see eleven seven. Okay, now he has uh, four to make and do some three to hit that guy. Okay, this is that. You know, I want I just want to visualize the option. So oh, let's okay. let's play six five and eight four. So other options. Um, this also looks great. Uh, if he doesn't hit, I mean, if he hits, that's quite bad. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and uh, this is eleven, double two, double three, double one is also kind of fine. So like fourteen numbers. Okay, I put it back, put it back. And what about making a four point? Okay, doesn't look nice actually. I I I don't like this so much. Like imagine he just enters two guys, say he was like one three. Now, you know, I don't have a fourth line, I have a blood sorber. No, I so this for me, this is not an option. Um is there any other play? No. So only two plays. So six five is decided. Um so now either eleven seven or eight four. Maybe eleven seven. That's fine. That's what I was looking at. If you if you play this and yeah. you play eight to four, you don't have a lot of checkers in the zone to follow up because this is seven away. Uh huh. Uh huh. So <laughs> you can make like a solid asset here. Mm hmm. Yeah, could you put it back and see eight four six five? Okay, so if he rolls a four, that's pretty bad. If he rolls like two three or one three, what's gonna happen now? That's good. That's good for red, but uh, still lots of you know lots of a lot of walk. Wow. The other the other thing that I'm looking at, and I'm sure you considered it too, is uh, like say you get hit, yeah, you're gonna need one through four to come in, and those numbers would be pretty good on the other side, to you know make this point or hit or hit back. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, maybe I go with this uh, actually. Which one? This like this. Eight four. Eight four. Now, I have a different question for you because when I watch you play and, and you're thinking of two options, uh, I feel like you usually uh, pick the second best play first and look at it, and then you change it and look at the play you, you thought was best. Is, mm -hmm. is that something that you actively do intentionally? I, I don't, but... Uh... I don't know why I do that, <laughs> 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 but this is how I how I think. You know, I don't know why, but it's like natural for me. I think There's it's no, not, no reason. For it's that. not. It's not a bad idea because then you only have to ch change the checkers once. <laughs> <laughs> so like this. What do you think? Yeah, I think this is this is going to be an interesting one to analyze. This uh -huh. will be good. It's just, uh, okay, so you're missed. Now you'll like threes are good here, but threes are good there. It's it's just really hard with these all these checkers back in the prime, but I think both are definitely reasonable and this will be a good one to analyze afterwards. Okay, let's say, let's go, go with this. Okay. Double three, oh my. Shit. Joker. Right. Yeah, roll it. Four one. Okay. Double three again. Oh my goodness. 
three, one. Okay. Six, five. Uh, you want to land to the midpoint. Yep. Oh boy. Yeah. Hoping okay. to make the three. Yeah. There. All right. Come down to the mid, please. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Now this is going to be fun. Okay. Ah, you see, like I saw your video about slotting between the anchors. It's very thematic, right? Mm -hmm. Three. And come out. Come out. Yeah. Five, three. Okay. We need a six. Okay. Six is good. And three. Oof. Show, show, me, hit, show, right? me, show me a hit. Show me a hit. The 15, yeah. That's one play. But the uh, wow. Uh, show me six three then. Uh hit like this. Hit like this. Because I have like very little hope of going forward. So maybe this is better idea. I yeah, I like this. I like this one um better yeah. than fifteen. And what about like this? Yeah, this one is also fine. Um I don't know. Yeah, but uh why you want to give up the, the midpoint? No, I, I don't necessarily want to give up the midpoint, but like yeah. I don't want to give him three, lose three pips of timing and give him good four numbers that are dancing numbers that have ruined your timing, right? I see, I see. Yeah, I hear you. I hear But you. I don't know. Yeah. This is the easy part. Yeah. I I think it doesn't really matter. I I'll, I'll go with six three. Yeah. Okay. Probably not a big deal. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay, now, uh, okay, I could play starting six. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. when I see the position like this, I actually checked uh, bad numbers for him. Yes. Uh, I could play eight, three, eight, six, right? Yes. But then his double six will be freely. Like he can go from the mid, uh, sorry, the uh, 23. He can run from the 23 if he was double sixes. But starting six, his double six will be a little bit pro problematic, I think. Yes. Now he has to go like 14, eight twice and eight, two, 10, four. Um, and we don't care about getting hit really. So I, I kind of like this just because of the uh, double sixes. Probably also ah okay six four is fine. Yeah, I I, I like this. I I like this. Yeah, this is good. I actually remember reading in one of Bill Roberti's books he talked about back games. If you can create a single anti joker, that might be the reason to do that in the back game. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, double six is not an anti joker yet, but it's uh, uncomfortable. It's not yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Four three. Four three. All right. Uh, I still don't want to hit hit him, so I would go thirty nine six three. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that was good. Mm -hmm. Six four. I would play. Yeah, Blake in the eight point. Right. So double three is bad for him. Okay. Okay. Five two. Now, I don't know. Uh, yeah, show me hit and cover. I probably don't do it. Ah, that's a lot of work. <laughs> uh, no. So this is something I call you know, the critical shot. In the back game, you're looking for this shot that's going to turn the game around, and I call it a critical shot. 
But uh-huh. this is not a critical shot because you're not ready on the other side yet. You cannot contain it. So it's not really a critical shot. It's a shot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's too much too much work for me uh, to hit now and contain a long guy uh, with four point open. Uh, right. I have to take care of the old jokers and everything. No, no, I don't I don't like that. So now would... what if what if this checker on the two point were on the six point? And you had five two to play. Oh, oh, then that's a very different story. Then, then you can hit and make a four prime. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, I would go with nine two. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Still <laughs> waiting for his double three. You know. Yeah. How so. do the threes play? Three. You can play from here, and that's it. Yeah. Okay. And one of the things that. I'm sure you know is uh, once the the opponent is the attacker is bearing off um, against the one three back game fives and threes are forced off the five points so that can be problematic. Mm-hmm. Okay, like that. But now he has a lot of them here. Mm-hmm. Now, now, I, oh, okay. Now I cannot hit <laughs> so six like that. out and three that. Like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Another double five. Oh. Oh, that was good for him. We should have stayed there. <laughs> okay. Oh, double one. Uh, all right. Um, we're going to bring the builders closer. So 12, 10. Um, maybe 15, 13. Yeah. There's another technique. I don't know if it's right in this position, but sometimes in these positions, you br- you bring this to within six and bring this one to within nine. Um, if you do something like this, yeah. Now it's six and seven, which are maybe some more numbers. Uh huh. Uh huh. You're right about that. Yeah. What do you What do you think? Um. Well, I don't pay attention to those details so much, but uh, no. okay, you have like 21 numbers to hear the other way, like a uh, little bit less, maybe? No, yeah, like two numbers less or something. You get a 5 4 in addition, right? Ah, uh, yeah, oh, that's true. So, so it's about the same numbers, actually. So, why, yeah, I like this one. So, this you have 17 numbers with the six, right? Plus five four. Well, that's nineteen, right? Yeah. Here oh, you have 21, 17, 21. 17 okay. plus four more numbers. And um, plus double four, even. Yeah. Okay, we can go with it. Okay. <laughs> if it's wrong, it's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is this is really important to have all these spares on the five for white in this position. Okay, so the intended. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, whatever. 12, 11, 10, 8, maybe. Yeah. I cover. Is it, yeah, I don't want to give up the four. Right. Anything. So, yeah. Sure. Okay, so now. Six four six out four. Uh do I stay back for double five and double sixes? What's the risk? The risk is two one maybe double two double one is a risk. There's also double three. Oh oh yeah you're right. So yeah I would go twelve sixteen twelve please. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I gotta go. Yep. And this one? It's seven. Yep. Yeah. So to slot the back of the prime. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Eighteen fourteen. That's for sure. Ace, maybe seven six, just for saving Gannon. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's unlikely, but also it's very small details. Yeah, I, I like seven six just yeah. in case I don't like yeah. seven, six or something. Okay, so now a five four six four would be really bad, mm -hmm. or even like four three. Yeah, four three. Yeah, four three. Not not us. <laughs> 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 you know we have this joke uh my friend joe russell when when he needs a roll like four three and his opponent just rolled a four three he says was that legal how did he play it and then he says i played it like this and he says what did he roll and as they're saying four three he rolls his number <laughs> he rolls his dice okay double three. Oh, oh double three for us it's a force yeah like Take that, you. okay. Okay, so uh, now, all right, go, yeah. Okay. No, oh, gotta come out. Okay. All right, that's good. No, three. Okay. On to the next game, Crawford game. So when you're at the Crawford game and you're at an odd away score, what is the difference in terms of the strategy at an odd away score versus an even away score? Um, odd away score, you play as a, a DMP, the one point match, because Gammon doesn't really matter. Uh, you don't gain much by winning Gammon, uh, but uh, against even score, if you, sorry, um, even Crawford game, you try to win Gammon uh, because it significantly increases your winning chance. And it's almost like, yeah, ga like almost like a Gammon go where like Gammon losses do not matter. So you can yeah, be yeah. more bold. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. 6 3. Like this? Yeah. Yeah. Makes a 20, please. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Not much options. Yep, double two. So I'm gonna make the four for sure. Then I think I'm gonna step up to the twenty-one. Yeah, yeah, looking good. I remember um, I used to watch videos of Falafel commentating, and he would always say, "Do these things in order. First, you come in, then you make the four point, then you step up." Mm. He was a good teacher. Mm -hmm. Oh sure. no. Mm. Okay. okay. Use and hit the seven. Okay. Now I'm gonna run ace to make the okay. Uh, make that five. Um, okay. it rules. The last one is interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. eight that or twenty three twenty three. Mm. I, I I like uh starting ten just in case he hit me back. I wanna have a deuce point anchor. Yeah, he's likely to hit me back, so Okay. Oh yeah, now deuce. Oh no. Okay, ace. Yep, this is okay. So at least I get uh one five back in. <laughs> Better than nothing. Oh possibly possibly more. I nope. get Four. Okay, four and six down. Yeah. I'd say like when I was writing about back games, I think like the one five back game is like the anchors are so far apart, basically they're maximum distance apart, and it almost acts like a two way holding game because it usually converts to either a twenty point holding game or an ace point game. Mm hmm. Mm. By the way, next time we do this, I'm gonna roll the dice, okay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the dice is so useless, please. You sound like my friend John Georgiou. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess come out. Yeah. There's more builders for the eight point. Four to step up, I think. Mm -hmm. And the 12, 10, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Right. Just make the A. Ready? Okay. Yeah, long from the back, yes. Okay, fine. Just come down. Okay. Just bring it in, in I think. Yep. Five one. Uh is there any reason to break it? No. So eight three six five. Yeah. See the yeah. fives are killed here. Yeah, well, well, five is killed anyway. Yeah. One, one five you are talking about. No, that's why white is slowing down because it's white, it's fives are killed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I see. Yeah. Uh, I could make a deuce. Maybe this is fine. Yeah, I, I like this. I like this. Yeah. Yeah. Anything like there's also this and considering like this or even uh, oh no that doesn't go there that doesn't oh that doesn't go there yeah so like this okay. yeah 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 I also considered uh, coming out but uh, yeah this is this is just totally fine I think yeah eight four yeah seven three mm -hmm. he's very slow <laughs> <laughs> that's what I say that's what happens with these yeah. Like all the way. Uh huh. Uh, twenty fifteen maybe. Yeah. This way, double fours makes the point. I guess, I, I, although you don't really want to make that point. Yeah, I, I want to make a bar point. Yeah. Okay, so fifteen five, thirteen three. Maybe a roll about three. Yeah, any three is pretty pretty bad, except three one maybe. Okay. And then that is good. Oh, Here's our chance. Shake your dice. Oh, got it. Okay, so here's the three. And uh, I'm going to slot with the four. I think. What? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I want to make the bar. Sorry, the, the one point. So you're hoping for a two one. <sighs> yeah, or I can just scroll him out. It's okay. Yeah. He has eight, eight, eight off, right? Yep, four one. So uh, you want to close now I, or not? I think I, I want to close it. If I don't, what's going to happen? Uh, I'm hoping that he rolls an ace and he rolls deuce. Okay, so when his opponent, your opponent is eight off and you close him out, it's like a 50-50, even game, but... Um, here he has an open one point, so I'm better than that. Uh, maybe I have like 55 or 58 or something if I close him out. But what if the spare is here on the three? It's a little deep, isn't it? Yeah, it is a little deep. Yeah, that's true. But if I don't make it, what I'm waiting for, I might really be happy that he or like ace. <laughs> No, I, I will cover. I will cover the ace points. Okay. Yeah. And one like that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I take my chances. Here. Okay. Yeah. So, five. And... Uh, yeah, maybe 2016. I, I see some people really think about all these. Like, what are the things that are going through your mind? Like, big numbers, small numbers, or yeah, it's uh, big numbers, obviously. Double five and double sixes, how it works. Um, this is probably slightly better for double sixes. Um, but it's a small difference, though. Double small difference. Difference. Okay, six three. Six, six, three. Okay, um, wait, well, goes the same points, right? So, 16, 10, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 13, 10, 13, 19, 10, then. Like that, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to play 10, 6. I think. It's it's very important to have a spell on the 6 because we yeah. don't want to have the 6 point. Uh, now, some people don't like doing this because they think, oh, double 6 leaves a shot. Yes. Um, no, <laughs> I mean, it's important if he doesn't have any men off, like... Right. Uh, the safety is your only concern, then 
you have to take care of the sixes, but here you have to take care of you know keeping a six point. So you right. want to have uh, you know guys on the six, you know, so that you can keep your closeout as long as possible. Yeah. Also, either way, you, you're going to leave a shot with double six no matter what. Well, uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. Okay. Okay, just going to the throw. At one moment, so sixteen <laughs> shot in. Let's see, sixteen shot in. Maybe like that. It's safe for double sixes. Um, uh, sixes right. uh, it's cross core, I think. Um, so my main goal here is dis distributing, you know, spares on six point and five point. Right. And, uh, and I don't want to, you know, end up on the same point. If I play 13, 12 and I load a six, I have to play 10, 12, six. So it goes the same spot. Right. Mm. Uh, but on the other hand, I have a spear on the six, so it's cross call. All right, 16, 13. Uh, 13, 12, that's what I do. Okay. 5, 1. Bye. Sure. Uh, just playing it in. If I'm going to load a 6, this is much better. If I'm going to load a 5, the other one is much better. Um, I kind of like six to five, I guess. Your goal, your goal right now is to maximize the uh, length of time you're able to keep the closed board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so like this. Yeah. Okay. Four one. Ouch. Okay. Seven two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They say I say uh sometimes uh sometimes backgammon is like marriage. You don't have to like it, you just have to make a play and hope to get lucky. <laughs> Six. I I gotta take off, I think. Yeah. Yeah, because if he's gonna roll a six, we are pretty much dead anyway. So just hoping he's not gonna roll a six, and then this is a much better play. Right. So yeah. if white still had more checkers on the board, yeah, how many checkers do you think white would need to have on the board before you would clear the six point? Ah uh, yeah, Mitya has some formula. Uh but I don't wanna go into details here and I'm clearly I don't need to calculate here. You, you know yeah. what I'm just you, this is feels right yes yeah. You know. yeah, yeah that's a, that's a good point you know i was thinking i forgot to ask you a question about the super grand masters because yeah. now it's you and dirk who do you think has the chance to, to become next what do you mean who, who do you think will be the next person to get that status as super grand master um or who are the top few on your list yeah, uh, there are a couple of people, um, like uh, Hideaki, Weather, mm -hmm. Kazuki, Yokota, um, yeah. then you have this guy. I don't want to miss out players, but uh, whoever has you know G zero status already has a decent chance. I think uh, Thomas Tenland and um, yeah, 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 at least yeah. Tatin Belen or and maybe Wilcox Stellings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, you really have to invest a lot of time on, on this. That's right, that's right. And you have to play a lot of matches as well. Uh, Wilcox doesn't play so many matches. I mean, BMAB matches. You know, you have to be lucky. You have to be lucky uh, to get easy games. Right. You know, I, I don't think... Um, it, it. Well, if you are truly 2.5 players already... Then you don't need to be lucky, right? But <laughs> um, 
like myself, when I achieved 2.5, I wasn't really played 2.5. I probably played like 2.6, but of course I was in streak of easy games and I found, you know, plays yeah. by accident, uh, you know, by coincidence, whatever. So you have to play a lot of matches to be in those 300 easy games. You know what I mean? Yes, you know, I, I think, you know, a lot of people talk about the luck and they look at the XG analysis and they see what the luck is. Yeah. For me, for me, a lucky game is when I get easy decisions. That's yeah, lucky. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what I'm talking about here. Of yeah, course. exactly, exactly. Yeah. Okay, let's continue. Let's continue. Yeah. Six, four. Okay, so we were hit. Double five. Uh, hit back. Okay. That was Great. the one number. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. You have, yeah, three, one. Why why you keep loading those like worse numbers? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. The, the okay, guys so... are from Backgammon Galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> uh wait a minute. So five, two for sure. Then ace. One off, maybe. Or... No, no, no. Uh, no one off is not keep an it. option. No. So either two, one or five, four. Uh, I probably go with five. Four. Two. two one will keep the board longer, won't it? Yeah. Like with a six one six two five one five two. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Two one, two one it is then. Yep. Mm -hmm. Three one. A hard decision. Okay. okay. Great. Great. Now we are favorite. Yeah. Okay. Now we we want to play safe from here. Okay. Yeah. Is this safe enough for you? <laughs> That's right. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Take off. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. We get another game. Yeah. That's that. That's the point. Okay. Okay. All right. Now it's a four away Crawford. So, yeah. All okay. Right. So Let's now you double. Mm -hmm. But against a human, when you're at a three away score or any odd away score post Crawford, sometimes you wait to double. And I read this is the first the first time I read this was in Backgammon Boot Camp by Walter Trice. But maybe you can explain it for the viewers. Um, well, this is a very complicated matter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we, we don't need to go details here. Okay, we'll uh, talk about that later. So yeah. double. Yeah. 6-2. Yeah. Uh, you're going to slot the, the five points. Now we're looking for a double gamut, of course, but mm -hmm. maybe difficult here. Yeah. Uh. I think I want to split to 20. Just gain some contact. Like if he don't like 6-2, you, you know, he has to leave a shot maybe. Oh, well, he doesn't need to actually. Um, but it's awkward. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I like this. I like this. I like this. Okay. So this, this brings me to a very good question because... I feel like a, a lot of people have read your book about the, the game plan, right? And they sometimes overgeneralize this because now there are 12 checkers in the zone with the stacks. And it says in the book, don't split against the blitzing structure. So why is this different? Why is this an exception? Mm. Well, first of all, um... Your ball is much stronger. Yes, and uh, he is not risk free, and un un unless he don't like one three, you know, one five, three five, those kind of lows, then he is like minimal risk. But those numbers, you are bad shape anyway, right? Um, but he don't, if he don't like two one, for example, uh, you know, he can make a five point, obviously, but then he has to leave like a bunch of shots from the bar, right? And also the. Uh, um the match score thing that he has no gain of winning gammon here because he's you know one away already 
Uh, but we, we as a lead can gain a huge amount uh, by winning Gammon uh, myself. So mm -hmm. it's like, risk is much less in money game than money game. So if you change the score or you change the board, then it might make like, it like if I am like uh, if I'm leading one away four away, I probably wouldn't do this. It's like too you know very right. right. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Two one didn't even yeah, make it. One. Yeah, he doesn't even yeah make it. All right. Five three. Five, three. I'm gonna make the three points. Yeah. I, by the way, I don't plan to make the anchor with a four. Um, you know, and I just want to, you know, stay back on the 24 and 20. So, so cover entire field, you know, inner field and outfield. Uh, I tell people sometimes this works a single blot. It's technically not an anchor, but it works somewhat as an anchor. Like I call it a phantom anchor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, phantom anchor is great until he point on you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A two down. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Double five. Okay. But Im imagine the same scenario. You know, I'm going to. Yeah, I'll be dead anyway. You know. Yeah. Um. Five one. Okay. Yeah. Two down. Sorry. Th to the seven. Of course. Yeah. You want to make the bar point. Oh yeah. 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 Who? Wow. Thirteen nine ten five, I guess. Yeah, just spread them out. Mm. Six so. in and two, yeah, nine seven. I would hit, I think. And yeah, hoping he rolls like one five, one four. I have like real chance now. Yeah. Yeah. But if he dances, then he might crunch. Yeah. Yeah. These prime yeah. versus prime are very difficult. Yeah. Very delicate. Going to kill the sixes. Yeah. I'm also thinking is there any benefit of slotting dice points? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, I don't think so, really. Um, no, I don't like it. I just play, yeah, two in. Yeah. Like this. Yeah. Because the one five and the one four. Yeah. On the keys of six, ah. Oh, yes. Six, okay. three, okay. Are you like that? Yeah. One, three. Yeah. Two, one. Ooh, wait, maybe wait. you could do like this. Yeah, maybe I want to kill the five. Because he's not going to leave a shot anytime soon. It takes at least two more rolls to leave any shot. So yeah, I, I would like I I would love this. Yeah, you might want to see it. like people sometimes they play too fast and they see that, but you really want this open to possibly have a prime should you hit a shot and kill the fives. Oh, so you see what he did? Mm -hmm. What do you call this for the for the viewers that are watching? He's kidding his six. Um, so he doesn't need to play any six if he just enters on the six point. The other guys on the eight, now he has played six to eight to two. So that's why this is the better. It's yeah, yeah. Killing spares spares, killing killing a six. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember I I read that in your um chapter on back games. Yeah. Like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Five one. Ah. Huh. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple of plays. Make the ace point five four. Wow. You know, I I just make a deuce point. Sorry, ace point. Maybe we get Ari shot like like now he leaves a shot with like six five. Six five, yeah. Uh, and I we hit and I can win from here. So okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we gotta go. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Looks like it might be it. Hmm. All right. Okay. We're going to take a sh short break to analyze it. Mm hmm.
Okay, now we'll analyze it. Outstanding play, as expected for you. Congratulations. Um, so we'll we'll just go through these. I think the simple ones we'll go through quickly. People like the arrow. Um, the five two was just come in and of course cover and make the make the point. Couldn't move here. And this was the six two. So this was the double decision. Wow, it's huge take. Wow, wow. Well, I so, misinterpreted this a lot. Yeah, this is hard. So let me do this here. And sometimes what I like to do, I don't know if you find this useful, is uh, put it on another board here. And what do you think would have to be changed to make it a take, a pass, or make it a no double, for example? Hmm. Like what about what what about? No, it it should be a take because it was such a huge take. But now it's closer. Of course. What about that? <laughs> now maybe borderline. Oh no, it's uh, still a big take. What about this? Now now there's good sixes from the board. Okay. Well, that's worse. But then get... you don't have an anchor. You will not yeah. get a five-point anchor. So now you, you don't have a good five, actually. Yeah. Uh, what up to you? OK, go back to original. Did you do that? Yeah. And place the checkers to 22, not 21. Move the checkers, yeah. The red checker. Mm -hmm, the red checker, yeah. What about now? Oh, okay. Now 23. I think it's going to be a pass. Oh, it's still a big take. Wow. So no matter how we modify the position, it's, it's a take. Interesting. That's, a, That's even bigger take. Mm. Hmm. Now it's now maybe a pass. Now it's a pass. But small one. Right. Okay. The, the other thing is going to the original position here. What if the score um, sorry. What if we change the score? Uh huh. Let's so I say said one zero is a huge pass. I said. Yeah. And, uh, what about three away, four away? No, no. Three away is a no double. It's big no double. Yeah. What about three away, three away? It's a, it's a big take, I think. It was like 300 take. Now it's maybe 100 take. 250. Oh, you know, it doesn't change much. If it's not a take, it's a mistake. Yeah, what about like <laughs> four way, four way? That is more interesting. Yeah, because one of the things I notice here is it's only 63 to 37. Yeah. But it's a one way gammonish position where one player is winning more gammons than the other. Yeah, but three point match. If you turn it around, you can double. Right, can right. Diamonds. So winning, winning matters. This is strong. Oh, this is still, uh, still, still take. Huh. Wow. The, okay. That I think the thing is that one, he is on the bar. Yes. Like two, um, red has actually decent structure. Once he makes the seven point. You he has like four flying, right? The the last factor is red has an ace point and four points solid. So he has a chance to make one for back in. So it's it's gonna be a take, you know, if it's that is established. Yes. Um did you ever see my uh dice distribution for cube action? Uh 
Um, maybe not. I'm not sure. I think I did, but uh, I I only use a uh, check apply. That is distribution. I I use that very often. This is a secret one I only share with you. So let's go back and look at the position. Mm -hmm. So there's the, um, what are like really good roles for why Double two, of course, right? Yeah. Double two yeah. is the best number, I think. So that's what this is. This one shows the partial market losing first roles. So this is the first role for the opponent and it's a partial market losing first roll because it's it's half of a market losing sequence. A market losing sequence, of course, is a series of two roles, one by one player and one by the opponent. But ah, uh, I see. Two. Okay. And anything that's greater than one means you lose your market. So that becomes Actually, green. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything that's less than one is still white. So the market losers, double two is the biggest one. And then double four, double three, double one. And the darker the green, the more you lose your market. Mm -hmm. uh, and then this is just graphed in a different way. You can see this is the one, the x-axis or the abscissa is one. So those are the market losers. Hmm. And this is this is how they're played. And that's pretty simple. And this is the partial market losing second rolls. So this means the rolls by red that are bad. Uh -huh. So like you see like double five and six five are really bad. And if you go back to the position, um, if we're hit, which is likely double five and six five are really bad. Yeah, yeah. And then this is the same thing. These are market losing sequences. So you're familiar with the um, six by six grid. This is a 36 by 36 grid. And actually, while I'm showing you this, I wanted to thank you because one of the things that you mentioned when I first made this is to break them up into six by six to make that line thicker. So that makes it a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. This is all of the next uh, whites next rolls at the top with the average on the bottom. And then reds next rolls after that on the left. So the way this is shown is I didn't put the numbers in because they're too small, but they can be put in. Mm -hmm. So basically what, what is the equity after this two roll sequence? So the first cell is after double one for white followed by double one for red. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and if it's red, the equity is less than one. That means it's not a market losing sequence. If the equity is more than one or one or more, it's anywhere from white to green. The darker the green, the more you lose your market. So like double two followed by double six is the darkest green. Mm. So this can be useful to think about your next roles. Um, and then this next one is basically the regular equity heat map, but it's in reverse. It's for the taker. So, oh, okay. so this is just a regular heat map where green is the highest and red is the lowest. And it doesn't matter if it's one or zero or whatever like that. And then um, these are the Joker sequences, like the double twos are really good. Mm. And this one is the anti-Joker sequences. And then this one will display the top 20 market losing sequences. Mm. Yeah. That Two, of course. Yeah, double two with anything. And, you know, I, you could display more of them, but that's, I, I just find that a little bit interesting because I feel like looking ahead in the next roll or two rolls helps both with checker plays and cube action. I think the most important thing about this position is that if he rolls a deuce, for example, five, two, he's not going to hit the bar point. He he He's going to hit the four point on my head. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is what happened actually. He rolled two one, and he didn't hit seven, but he hit. I have two here. Yeah. Yeah, two one here. Yeah, he always hit six four. Because you unstack the six point, you get another checker on the bar, you knock off the checker. This this twenty one point is slotted. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if he if he he gonna hit the seven points, then I have a chance to roll in the four. Yeah, you can anchor. Yeah. I remember one of the things from your chapter on back games 
is if the opponent has three checkers back, sometimes you don't want to hit a, set, uh, a fourth checker because it may give them the opportunity to, to make a second anchor, which yeah, is yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Any any other comments about this one? No, 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 no. Let's go. But That's it's, good. Interesting. it's interesting. Yeah. Okay. So the six four. This was this was clear, right? Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. This one I was confident. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the one four. Aha. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh wow! Eleven seven is a blunder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is yeah. So it looked like this. The eleven seven would have looked like this. It does get the solid four prime, but there is something to be said, as I said, for putting two checkers on the bar. Do they have a saying in Japanese and English? They say two on the bar is better by far. No, what's that? It just rhymes when they say two on uh-huh. the bar is better by far. By far, okay. Yeah. Okay, four one was forced, and the three one was forced. The six five was just a run. And then the four three, we anchor and then came down. So there's a little bit of back game strategy. The six five, we couldn't move. The four three was just popping out. Okay, so these these are sometimes XG misanalyzes these things, but ah, it's set to go twenty four to fifteen. Ah, interesting. Okay, you uh, might be able to play for so these are hard. Extreme gamons, extreme gamons might think I have some chance of going forward. Um, maybe I could upgrade from twenty four to eighteen. I'm. Um, so that I'm transforming from one three back in to like three seven four right. day. But this is already upgrading it. But I guess you 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 don't want to be recirculated. Yeah, maybe I should you know change my plan change my plan to you know the uh, one three back in to three seven. I think. I remember there was a video you did um where you were giving a seminar maybe it was in marbella or maybe it was somewhere about the back games and one of the one of the positions you said is sometimes the best thing is to get out of the back game (laughs) very often actually you remember (laughs) i watched i watched that video maybe 20 times yeah uh, all right oh great because very often avoiding back game is the best back game strategy but since I was doing back game seminar, you know, I can't say that too much. You know, I mean, that, then what's the point? But anyhow, in in reality, you know, back game is so difficult uh, to yeah. time. So that's yeah. probably the case here too. Yeah, sometimes you have to do like a four ply huge rollout on these to get a really good answer. Um, and the other thing about back games is when you're playing them in like a BMAB format or UBC. Yeah. They just kill your PR. Uh huh. Yeah. So here, it like this. I don't get it, really. I know. My well, H is duplicated. Uh, but five, yeah, five is kind of duplicated too. Yeah. Like double three, maybe is bad. Well, double three is... No, no, not double three. Yeah. Double two, maybe. Double two. Double yeah, I counted a double two, but... Double this six. Is, yeah, double six, six is bad uh, with my play, too. Right. Hmm. Maybe I'll have to do a further analysis with the dice distribution on this later. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's go. And then the four, three... What did it like? Eight four six three like this. Ah. What do we do? This making a board faster, maybe. Yeah, I guess. I'm leaving more blots to be recirculated. I guess it does gain some timing. You need a little more timing. Oh, oh, okay. So it forced white to hit me, uh, so that I can gain some timing. Yes. Uh, if he chose not to hit, then I have always I always have a slot to like hit and cover or something. Right. Maybe. Okay. 
-hmm. And the 6-4, this was the original position. What is it like? It like this. Ah, okay. Just giving it up. This makes the double threes no longer an anti-joker. Yeah. And we did this one. But on the other hand, we also have a double three anti joker too. Right, right. <laughs> and if he's not going to roll a double three now, uh, then of course the best play is much better than my play. But it's a better distribution. And um, I don't have an anti joker. I think this is, this is very good for a lot of the novices that are watching because they watch and they see and it shows that even the best players in the in the world are not perfect. <laughs> no, right? it's far away from the perfect. Far away. <laughs> okay, so don't be intimidated. Uh, All right, five two, the like oh, eighteen eleven. Same, same. Yeah. Well, at least we didn't hit it. You know, we didn't. Right. Chose right. It. We were looking at this option, wasn't yeah, it? So that's one point for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We were. I guess it's the same principle. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, check it. Now it's yeah clear. Yeah, now it's now it's clear. Now it's clear. Yeah. Yeah. So I probably put too much emphasis on double three Joker for him. Yeah. But this is better for the distribution for the future. Um, so I sacrifice double three, but I gain a lot of the all the other rolls, I guess. This is a simple dice distribution. You see the double three right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But here are the six the sixes and fives. Ah, okay, 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 okay. Like if he gonna leave uh immediate shot with six five or other numbers, then much better to have a, a four point, not deuce point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay. And then the six three. Mm -hmm. These ones were close. Yeah, that doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the double one, these these were just like little things that didn't really matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh oh wait, what was this is the one that was ah what was it that you were saying like uh fifteens, yeah, that's yeah, that's a Point oh oh four <laughs> because here you get the sevens and sixes rather than the nines and sixes. See, yeah. sometimes I'm proud of myself. Okay, ten seven doesn't matter. What what else was there? There was nothing really too interesting here. The six one, the four one. Oh, oh it wow. likes it likes staying there. So. Yeah. The gamma, the the decrease in gamma losses were very was very small. Ah. So it's better to, it's better to be able to make the prime, that wins more games. Okay. What else? And then there was there was nothing else we could do here. Okay, so we'll go to the next game. So the the opening play is the six three. It's you, you come down like this when they slot. You always want to fight for the key points. Uh -huh. And the 5 4 was just making that point. And then this one. Oh, it liked. Oh, these were tied. Mm -hmm. Tied, yeah. Okay. And then we couldn't move. Double two was coming in hit. Mm -hmm. And then the double three. Okay. So this is the one that we were talking about. The last one, it was better to come down than to go up like that. Yeah, we discussed this. Okay. Then we couldn't move. Then the 2-1 was forced. The 3-1 was, was forced here. There was a lot of forced moves here. The 5-3, we just had to do this. And let's see what else. 5-3, we came out. 4-2, it's important to step up. And th that one didn't matter. Mm -hmm. Then the 5-2, we just made the point. 4-3. Um, just coming out seven three. I don't think it matters. And two one. It likes that, but they're they're close. 
rewind, nothing special here. And here, they were close. They were all close. What else was there? Seven three. I don't think we had anything else that was interesting here. No, but we hit. We hit. Oh, we hit. Hard. We hit. When yeah. did we hit? Oh, yeah, yeah, we hit. We hit here. Okay. And then we had the 4 1. Oh, so yes, the covering was important. Okay. It's close, no? Oh, it, no, you, you yeah, 24 19 is, I mean, it, it is not out of the question. This is a candidate. Yeah. If he had like, you know, like nine off or 10 off, it could be right. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, yeah. So that's that's one of the things that we were talking about, right? No, we didn't really talk about this position. Oh, we yeah. talked about another position. Yeah. Could you check like one four is right to cover with nine checkers off, for example? Nine. This is eight. Check one more checkers off. Yeah. This one yeah. off? Yeah, yeah. Now I think no covers. Ah. Yeah. Let's see. Okay. And then what about this? Does this make a difference? Why it should make a difference? Because uh, you don't have the other point, the, the other checker deep, quite as deep. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, still cover. Hmm. Okay. And then these ones were kind of trivial stuff, nothing special mm -hmm. and this one again didn't matter mm -hmm. three one this is the one we were talking about it was right to come down here mm -hmm. yeah wow it's a big difference actually this one yeah more than more than you would have thought right mm -hmm. and so then what about this five yeah. one oh it liked the 12 six mm, okay so it's stupid to have moved the spare from six to five yeah God. Okay, then the four one was not good. Mm -hmm. Six three was right to take two off, mm -hmm. and the double five was a great roll. Yeah, and the three one. Ah, see, this one was my fault. I convinced you the other way. Yeah, it's hard to calculate that thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, and then what else did we have? That was about it here. Okay, last game. 4-2, and then this is an automatic double and a take. 6-2 was just slotting it. 4-1. Again, this is this is where you can do this, but if it, if this one were, were for money... Probably not. A cube should be the other side, by the way. Cube should be in the middle? No, yeah. I mean, or, or middle, or my side, at least. Let's see, middle. I think he going to double. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. Now, what about if it's here? Well, still 39 is better play. By 20, I guess. Yeah. Right, right. Okay. Very good. And then the 5-3, we just made the point. And 5-3 was two down. We couldn't move. 5-1 was essentially forced. And I don't think there was anything else here. Well, I, we had some chance, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there there was some chances. Yeah. Oh, this is the one where you have to hit, right? Yeah. Can can you show me a lot before the 4-1, his play? Ah, okay. So here I have like 15% winning chance, yeah? Yeah. Uh but after six one, one roll later, after hit, I have like twenty-three. Right. So it was clearly a good roll for me. I increased the winning chance by eight percent. Right. You think of the anti jokers like five one, four one, three one. Yeah, three one is just fine. He can keep the keep the fine. Three one, oh three one, yeah, but five one, four one, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And the four two was just killing the sixes like you had discussed. And the six three. Mm, yeah. What else? Three one. And then oh, these ones were close. Mm. Yeah. But 
I, I believe, and I think, I don't know about your students, but for, for me personally and my students, I feel like the majority of my errors and most people's errors are from not even considering the best play. And the fact that you considered both of these plays is 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 important because some people wouldn't have considered it. I have more stuff in drawer that I would say. You have more what? Well, I don't know. It, it, in Japan, we say uh, I have more drawers. You know, I have more things to. I I saw more positions. You know, so that I have more stuff in my drawer. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like in your brain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. More reference positions. Mm -hmm. Okay. More ideas. Yes, yes. Okay. And then this is this is where you wanted to make the point, although they were close. Mm. And the six two, and that was that was pretty much it for here. Yeah. So very good. Uh, it was very interesting that I made a streak of mistakes in checker play. In, in the back game thing uh, that I have to go forward with 6-3, then I have to leave the 18, not, you know, trying to get double three, but rather I have to go with my own structure to keep it simple. And yeah. I think I made uh, altogether maybe like 150 errors on those positions. Yeah, yeah. But still outstanding performance. And I, I think that, that, as I said, the two things is number one, to have fun, and number two, to learn. I think we did both. Yeah. I mean, like, when, when I do these videos, it's like sometimes I'll play it with people, and they're like, oh, well, you won that, or I won that. Or To be honest, I don't even remember if I won or lost, because I, uh -huh. I mean, is that when you're playing against XG or something, is that something that you think about, winning or losing, or you just want to play the best PR? Um, no, uh, but well, I play uh, extreme gammon as a practice, you know, and I don't really count, I don't, you know, take notes, anything who win, who lose. But one thing I noticed is that extreme gammon is a strong, he, yeah. he beats me, of course, he beats me in PL, but he beats me in the result as well, like all the time, you know what I mean? That's yeah <laughs> so yeah but i mean like that's that's something you know even if you're the best player in the world the computer is still much better and yeah yeah that's yeah. okay that's okay yeah. no, no 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 that's okay I, I i'm talking i'm simply making a point that even with a traditional win loss count he is beating me you know quite a bit <laughs> you know what i mean and right. we don't need like 100 matches to to confirm I would see like 30 games, you know, 30 matches is enough that he always beat me. Um, I mean, it's not always, but it's quite likely that he will, uh, you know, in winning in after 30 games. Okay. Well, very good. Very good. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed it. I uh, hope to have you again uh, soon, hopefully soon. Um, I know you're busy. Um, before we conclude, uh, do you, I know a lot of people are going to watch this and, take advice from you. Do you have one piece of advice or maybe two or three pieces of advice for people that are trying to improve their game? What would you say? Hmm. Uh, well, it's it's dangerous to generalize the advice because it depends on the level of the players. Okay. But uh, most people uh, play too much and play uh, study too little. You know what I mean? Say if you have two hours to study, two hours to spend back in them, most people play like one hour and 50 minutes to play and 10 minutes to study, right? Um, but I would suggest that maybe you should you know, play one hour and study one hour um, so that you can learn a lot. Um, after you know playing one year or two years, you don't gain much by just just playing you know if you're a complete beginner playing is most important you have to play a lot of games to gain some experience but after you pass that point you put deliberately more effort on to study positions like you know check extreme game like like we did you know change the position a little bit you know what is the matters what doesn't matter 
and use your own brain. You know, that's the most important thing. You know, you have to figure out just not to, uh, ah, okay, this was Ella, that was Ella, I remember. No, you don't remember. You know, you have to figure out, you know what I mean? <laughs> so that this is really your, in your blood. Um, then you can have a better chance to make a uh, best play in the next goal. Yes, yes, I would agree with you. Like, like I feel like we spent more time discussing the plays and analyzing it afterwards. And I think doing these exercises, like you mentioned, change the checkers, move it one here, one there, see what happens. Yeah, that changes things. And changing the score, for example, and looking at all this, like the dice distribution analysis. You know, you know, I've taken it to another level. And you know, just creating that took me months. <laughs> so it's like I had to prepare that in order to be able to study. And I think that's a valuable tool, not necessarily for everyone, but for not for beginners. But if you're trying to get really good, like where you were at, it's a great tool. Yeah, yeah. amazing tool. Great, great. Um, OK, well, very good. Thank you. Thank you very much to my good friend. Do you have any final comments before we conclude the video? Uh, no, uh, but I'm still happy that Dirk uh, managed to play 2.5 and I really wish the other strongest players will follow and join uh, Super Gun Masters Club um, because that's basically, uh, what do you say, improvement of the human being, uh, you know what I mean? And then hopefully in the future, somebody achieve Super Gun Master 1. Uh, which nobody achieved yet. Um, what is yeah. what is that? What does that require? Two point zero. Two point zero. What <laughs> what are the different levels? There's three S three, S two. No, so Super Grand Master, you have to play two point five or okay. lower. Uh, Super Grand Master two is uh, two point two five or oh. below. Which I achieved right, and uh, Super Grand Master one. Uh, you have to play 2.0 or below. And if somebody achieves that, we have to, you know, create a new category like Ultra Super Grammar. So what is <laughs> <Super God>. God. <laughs> <laughs> who, who created these who created these titles? Was it Rick Janowski or Mark Olson or somebody? No, I think it's Rick Janowski. And um, Super Gun Master wasn't even you know, exists when uh, he created this system. Only Grandmaster, because we didn't think uh, it's impossible to play below whatever, below 2.5, you know what I mean? So only Grandmaster 1, which is 3.0, was like uh, the best category, I think. Right. And while we're on the topic, I I never met Rick Janowski, but the Janowski formula, mm. and, you know, I know he recently passed away. Did you know? Uh, he's a great theoretician. Um, he was, you know, great mathematics and uh, I'm a backend player and he's a nice guy. Uh, it's a great loss that uh, we, uh, you know, he was passed away. Yeah, yeah, but he did He did a lot of good things and we're mm. thankful to have had people mm. like him, like Falafel, like Paul McGreal, Walter Trice, all these people. Mm. Yeah, otherwise, if he wasn't there, then there's no B-Map, B there's no Super Grandmaster, you know, there's no... Yeah, that's a great legacy that he did. Yeah, absolutely. Well, of course, we uh, honor all of those people and thank them and thank you for everything you do. I appreciate your time and people will really enjoy this uh, video. Congratulations to all of your achievements. Congratulations to you on all of your achievements. Um, Keep up the good work. You're an outstanding ambassador. People really love it. It it means a lot that you're not not only a top player, but promoting the game as well. So thank you for all of those things. We'll go ahead and conclude the video. Uh, thank you again to my good friend Mochi Masayuki Mochizuki. Thank you to the viewers. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for watching. For a long thank time. you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe, and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Please let me know what you think in the comments below, what you'd like to see in future videos, so I can work on that. I appreciate your super thanks. These small donations allow me to continue creating the high-quality content 
that you enjoy. And now with our new membership option, you can uh, access exclusive videos like this one. And my book, Backgame and Backgame Strategies, is available. There's a link in the description to where you can get it. And I will put a link to your book too, uh, Backgammon Masterclass. It's a much easier uh, read than my book. <laughs> my book is, is very technical. And um, while, I, while I'm here, I wanted to thank you very much for helping me with the book. You, you, you helped me a lot. So thank you to that. And if you're interested in lessons from me, my email address is in the description. And Mochi, you also give lessons as well, correct? Yeah, yeah, I do. I do. Is the best way to contact you via email? Um, or Facebook. Um, Facebook? Yeah. Or, you know, Instagram, whatever. Okay, I'll put that in the description. Uh, I look forward to seeing everyone in future videos. And until then, keep rolling your dice.